to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Praise the Lord. This morning, I believe that the Lord is going to bless us in a very unique way. Thank you. God bless you. Pastor Larry, thank you. It's an honor. It remains an honor to serve Jesus. And I honor every man and every woman of God here. Powerful session by Minister Onos. Let's honor her. Thank you. Very powerful session. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands in one minute and ask the Lord for a visitation yet again. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along the eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Yes, Lord, we desire to know. We desire to walk in that path that leads to power, that leads to grace, that leads to increase. And we cry tonight that you will breathe upon us, help us, O oh God, throughout this session. Let us encounter Jesus and let us encounter your power. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Very quickly for this session, I'll be teaching on the laws of spiritual power. And I plead that you pay attention because these truths are the keys that I believe control um, an individual's excelling as far as walking in the power of God is concerned. We had a very brief discussion at dinner yesterday with Pastor and I was just telling him that this subject of spiritual power has been one that for some reason many people truly desire and hunger for the power of God in their lives but for some reason they never really seem to step into the reality of that experience and everything written in scripture is for the benefit of the believer are we together it does not give god glory in withholding every possibility that can make the believer efficient this includes the availability of sufficient spiritual power and so i hope and pray that in this session god would open our eyes and reveal to us the keys that truly control authority and power in this kingdom again may i remind us that conferences like this are opportunities for god to open our eyes further to open our eyes to truth he says ride prosperously because of truth you do not ride prosperously just because you intend to it takes truth to give you advancement hallelujah um this, this message is dedicated to those who truly intend to walk in the power of God, who are tired of status quo, tired of a powerless Christian experience, whether as a man of God, 
as an ambassador of the kingdom generally speaking as a believer it takes power to really reveal jesus hallelujah yesterday we had a very brief session and we began our discourse from genesis 1 for those of you who were not there yesterday let's do a quick recap for two or three minutes genesis chapter 1 we started from verse 1 to 4 revealing god's definition of power and the scriptural reference that genesis chapter 1 especially from verse 3 and 4 represents our ultimate pursuit as far as walking in power is concerned you know where to stop in your journey of the pursuit for genuine spiritual power when you attain unto this standard are we together one verse one says in the beginning god created the heavens or the heaven and the earth two it says now the earth was without form void darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters he says verse three and god said this is power now and god said and there was and god said and there was that means you truly are walking in power when you sustain the ability to say and it happens if you say and it does not happen you are not walking in power and god said and there was and then we did say that there is still a step further verse 4 that everything god said he saw that it was good so if it is god you don't just see evil you will see that it is good if god says he will see and what he will see has to be good because it is every good and perfect gift that comes from above is that true hallelujah so we challenged ourselves that in genesis 1 and verse 26 man was made in the image and the likeness of god remember yesterday we said how that adam was the first man to experience this holistic dimension of god in him to be created in the image and the likeness of god every other creature hitherto had been created in the likeness of god but not the image of god the image of god was his exclusive gift to man hallelujah praise the lord and that since man was created in his image and in his likeness that means if God were true to say man was created in his image and likeness, then man should be able to, like God, say and see what he said. Is that true? Do you agree with me? Hallelujah. And the first test would happen with Adam. The Bible says God brought the animals to Adam so that he would name them. And we did say yesterday that naming them was not to give them scientific names it was science that did that job to name them means to give them their characteristic identity and the bible says whatsoever adam called it that was the name thereof consistent with that rule this must be the compass that guides us because every time in scripture you see this litmus test if you say and you see it is proof that there is power if you say and you do not see it is proof that something is wrong are we together now yes because many of us the area of our christian experience where we have been frustrated in principally is the lack of the manifestation of our desires especially the things that we say we make a lot of bold confessions in the name of jesus i am the head and not the tail in the name of Jesus, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have authority over principalities and powers. But our experiences don't seem to line up with those things. And so this conference was designed to, number one, remind us that we are in the days of his power. And then to show us the dynamics of truly walking in spiritual power. And let me say this with a particular bias to men of God. In the days that we live in 
we truly need power if our messages are not backed up with power then we will be prepared for empty pews because there are many options satan has been very intentional through the years in fabricating options many options in as much as our messages are powerful because they are the platforms for communicating doctrine we must sustain the grace to have power i made up my mind that i would never be a powerless believer number one two i would never be a powerless ambassador of the kingdom number three that i would never be a powerless man of god when you are a powerless man of god you will be jealous you will be angry you will fight you will hate yourself you will hate others from the lens of your frustration and many other things the baggages that come with being powerless is not worth it hallelujah so please pay attention as we share on the laws of spiritual power there are laws in this kingdom the laws of the kingdom guarantee um, and they make predictable the ways of God if God is to make the possibilities in the kingdom available to every believer without any prejudice then he must capture the workings of those possibilities in laws so that anyone could engage it and receive the results remember i think it was during um, the pastors and leaders conference if i'm right on that i thought that every time if you open the bible there are three things you are interacting with three realms of spiritual possibilities number one you are in, you are interacting with the promises of god contained in scripture are the promises of god number two contained in scripture are the principles of the kingdom number three contained in scripture are prophecies so every time you open your bible you are interacting with these three dimensions the promises of god a representation of his the boundary of his commitment to the believer number two the modus operandi of the kingdom called the mysteries or the secrets of the kingdom now when you are interacting with the promises of god you just need knowledge and then to sustain how to petition him based on those promises but when you are encountering or interacting with the principles of the kingdom you will need the spirit of wisdom because the principles of the kingdom are not all in plain sight some of them are hidden in parables some of them are hidden in stories you will need the spirit of wisdom to help you unravel a scripture would have profited you when you can draw the mystery out of it otherwise you'll just be reading a novel you're reading a story an interesting story a story that god was involved in it takes the holy spirit to be able to draw out the mystery that is hidden in that story and then number three of course is prophecy it's important for us to know that beyond this realm and beyond this time there are realities that will happen even after our dispensation the power of prophecy is that it gives you hope to know that even though i am not in the future yet i have seen the end are we together now because it is dangerous there's something called in our world the fear of the unknown every time the future is hazy it brings fear and so god being alpha omega goes to the end and reveals it to us that the end is victory regardless what happens the end is a life of victory and grace with christ directly with him in fellowship not just spiritually as we do now but that we will be with him be changed to become like him in that fullness and we will live together so this gives us hope now we are discussing the laws of the kingdom that every time you see the power of god activated in the life of a man predictably so in ever increasing measures there is no lock there there must have been an activation of you see mastery 
is measured in consistency no one is really reward for doing something professionally once you would have to do it for a long time are we together now yes he that strives for mastery the bible says is not crowned except he strives lawfully open our eyes in the name of jesus law number one that any believer who seeks to truly walk in power genuine spiritual power must subscribe to the law of spiritual illumination law number one the first spiritual law that controls the manifestation of power in the life of a believer is called the law of spiritual illumination genesis chapter 13 from verse 14 to 17 there is a relationship between your sight the light that comes from it translated to, translated to knowledge and then you're walking in power here's what he told abraham after lot had separated from him he said lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward southward eastward and westward 15 for the land which you see not the land which is available it is the one you see that i will give unto you and your descendants lift up your eyes and see the part of scripture that you see is the one i will give unto you not what i am able to do the one you see if you only see healer you can only reveal him as healer you will be surprised that you will be a powerful healer and you will be broke you will suffer as if jesus lied about prosperity because that is the area where you can see if you see him as the god that restores you will experience restoration and nothing else but restoration this is why he he defined the scope of your sight don't see northward alone don't see southward alone these are imbalances he says make sure you broaden the scope of your horizon see northward see southward see eastward don't just see a healer alone he's not only a healer you need to know him as a provider you need to know him as a lifter you need to capture as many dimensions of him that your sight can capture because as far as you can see it will be given to you it would have been better if it stopped with you but your descendants will also follow your plane of sight he says it is given to you and your descendants that means if i limit my view and my perspective about god everybody i mentor i will mentor from the lens of my limitation and they will follow suit lift up your eyes are we blessed now and see way maker miracle walk promise keeper light in the darkness my god all one person way make miracle walk let me give you an assignment dear bible student after this program before the evening service go online and search how many names of god are revealed in the bible from genesis to revelation i will not tell you praise the name of the lord find out how many names in nigeria they complain if they give you up to four names they say well, what is there ah, but it's too much two is okay your name and whatever you found as your father's name that's that's enough now here is god carrying names because a name is more than a means of identification a name is an accreditation this is who you are this is who you are again i want to stop but you are not stopping so i have to keep giving you names i keep giving you names the assignment of every generation is through their experience with god they should find a new name and add to the list of the names of god and if our generation does not contend deep enough with god to give him a name we should not just recycle the names we heard there are more names the name is a product and a capture of our experience with god until jacob came there was no god of jacob until abraham came there was no god of abraham <clears throat> 
so you have an assignment that through your lifetime you bring a name that you can hand over to your children and say this is a capture of the dimension of god that my whole lifetime it was like a research and at the end of my life here is my conclusion that he's more than this hallelujah the power of spiritual illumination what you see if you do not know that god can go this far you will not release your faith to see him go that far are we together yes in ephesians chapter 1 popular scripture from verse 15 we read and here we see paul ephesians 1 from verse 15 paul praying over the church in ephesus ephesians 1 and verse 15 and he was praying a very very deep and a very spiritual prayer over it says therefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus notice all the things he's hearing about your faith in the lord jesus christ and your love for all the saints next verse it says i do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayer 17 that the god of our lord jesus christ even the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him uh-huh the eyes of your understanding being enlightened amplified says flooded with light that ye may know you see that now ye may know and understand the hope which he has called you and how rich is glorious inheritance in the saints is set apart once 19 he says so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believed as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in christ when he raised him from the dead now you know what he's saying he's praying that you understand the extent of power that is available to you as a believer and he's saying that same power what was what was used to raise jesus from the dead the same power given to the believer it takes light and it takes knowledge to be able to walk in spiritual power this is very important psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7 another popular scripture the bible says they know not so this is a knowledge problem neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes why they know not neither will they understand they know not that god lifts they know not that god restores they know not that god can favor they know not that in him you can find speed they know not that there is dominion over principalities and powers they know not neither will they understand it is important that we trust God for the spirit of illumination to be able to open us up. There is a direct relationship between the knowledge of the word of God, not just the word of God, the knowledge of what is written and your experience as far as power is concerned. It will not happen to you just because it is written. It will happen when you know that it is written. It is when the light comes that you arise not when the light is there it must come to you just because the power holding company has light does not mean darkness will go away from your house until the light that is with the power holding company gets to your house that is when it profits you so you find solace in knowing that there is light there your next assignment is to find a way of connecting with the light that is there no matter the distance from their office or their station to your house there is nobody who frowns at the effort of drawing light from anywhere to his house have you seen someone getting angry and say my house is too far no 
no matter how far if it means to put pole wires if it means to use a generator whatever effort you do it with pride the most important thing is that there must be light in your house and you smile with joy as you see everywhere illuminated this is how it must be you must draw that truth from wherever it is until it gets to your life are we blessed I submit to you truthfully that our generation is largely very ignorant we say a lot of things that we do not understand Job 42 and verse 3 this is a lesson for many of us Job was also a victim of that Job 42 and verse 3 behold Job 42 42 and verse 3 42 and verse 3 It says, who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? It says, therefore I have uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. I was just speaking, speaking, speaking about things I did not understand. Speaking about things I did not know. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. And the realm of the spirit is saying, if you really knew what you were saying. Do you know what it means for him to be the rose of Sharon? The lily of the valley? What is a lily doing in a valley? That is a miracle. And yet you say it. The lily of the valley means he can become anything in any valley, in any wilderness whatsoever. Knowledge. 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 We will continue to embarrass ourselves as believers until we contend for light high level spiritual illumination if all the lights in this beautiful auditorium were put off and you just light your phone there is light there but not enough to turn the night today you must have light enough to turn your night today john chapter 1 and verse 5 it says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not hallelujah light when you have sufficient light you will be able to see why do you use headlamps even though you have eyes in the night it is the presence of the headlamps if your light goes bad even if your eyes are good you are in trouble is that true your sight depends on the illumination it is in your light that we see light so it is possible that what you see is darkness if the light that comes to you is not true light he said that was the true light that means there must be false light that was the true light that lighted every man is God speaking to us one more scripture and then we'll rush quickly to the next point Mark chapter 8 Mark chapter 8 from verse 22. Very interesting story. Mark chapter 8 and verse 22. Jesus now, he cometh to Bethsaida and they bring a blind man unto him. Listen, look up please. Did you know that there were certain people in scripture who were not healed in Jesus' ministry? But there was no single blind man that Jesus left blind. Jesus took the issue of blindness personal. Everywhere he saw a blind man, he insisted that he was healed. There were 10 leprous people. They went, 10 were healed, only one was whole. You see that? He didn't call the remaining nine to say, they are not whole, return back, let me make you whole. But for this blind man, watch what Jesus did. They bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him next verse and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town and when he had spit on his eyes he put his hands on him and asked and asked him if he saw aught. here's what the man said he looked up and said i see but here is what i see i see men as trees i see prosperity but i see it as a burden i see it as a cause i see the healing ministry but I see it as something that is past. And Jesus said, we need to correct your understanding. I'm still going to perform. I'm not ashamed to do it again. 
where did you find in the bible where he did the same miracle twice on one person we're talking of the mighty god but with respect to the opening of your eyes i will do it as many times till you see well that means just because you studied it yesterday you need to study again to see what you saw yesterday began the journey but may not take you so far jesus is teaching us a lesson with the opening of the blind eye that when it has to do with blindness lay hands and verify what is seen just because the man is saying i see it will be a risk to leave the person what do you see he said i see men but i see them as trees that means based on my viewpoint i don't know the difference between men and trees If you ask this man to write a book on vision imagine what he's going to write is that true he will tell you based on his theology that a man and a tree are two the same are, are two things and that trees can walk and men also can walk that trees are re re related to man, to men this is based on his theology and he will be right because that's what he's seeing except that what he's seeing is not all that there is so jesus performed this miracle and afterwards he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him to look up and he was restored and he saw every man clearly and he saw every mystery clearly and he saw every dimension of god clearly someone lay your hands on your eyes and declare lord open up tear up that veil let me see clearly let me see clearly i saw something last year during activate conference but let me see clearly i saw something about the healing ministry i saw something about your power but let me see clearly clearly I saw something about the prophetic ministry but let me see clearly I saw something about worship the ministry of prophetic psalmistry but let me see clearly someone is praying for everyone that asketh receive it man of God I saw something about ministry and church growth and the power of God to lift men but let me see clearly if Jesus was not embarrassed to lay hands on the man a second time as God then we must not be ashamed to pray let me see again let me see again hallelujah praise the name of the Lord listen let me tell you something the beats that I know and I've seen in ministry I have learned a very very powerful lesson in ministry that at any level there is truly so much more than we know and if we do not sustain the grace to cry for the miracle of greater light we will camp around a dimension of God and build a monument around that dimension whereas there is northwards southwards he would have just said lift your eyes but he said no if you are looking this way you can't see what is behind but there is something behind if you are looking left you can say there is only one screen in this auditorium you are right based on your vision you are wrong based on the truth you see the fact is what is what based on your vision but the truth is what is based on God's standpoint Acts chapter 18 is God helping us this morning remember you came to church this is the house of God Acts chapter 18 let's start from verse 24 very briefly reading quickly and then we'll move to the next point this was a very very interesting story that we blessed my life many years ago and taught me that no matter how far you go in God there are greater dimensions as far as understanding the ways of God is concerned acts 18 from verse 24 and a certain jew named apollos the bible says he was born at alexandria 
an eloquent man a mighty man in scripture he came to ephesus the place of knowledge this man was instructed in the way of the lord the bible says he was fervent in spirit he spake and taught that means he was not just a student he had risen to a point where he was accredited to even be a teacher he spake and taught diligently in the things of the lord but there was a limitation please read the last sentence you see they're ready one to read stop 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 knowing only <laughs> leave whatever he knows only that that's not our concern knowing only the fact that the bible recognizes that this eloquent man fervent in spirit mighty in scripture yet knowing only knowing only great apostle joshua selman mighty in this but knowing only you see that verse 26 the bible says he began to speak boldly so take note everything he's saying is only everything he's saying is only he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard him the bible says they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of the lord more perfectly they didn't say you are talking nonsense but i, I can imagine how happy they were listening to him shouting and sweating on stage and they were impressed but they say oh dear look at the gaps in this man's understanding after the service he thought they came for prayer and they came and said look we love you we were impressed with that message but come sit down there is something we need to show you this is a lesson dear preachers it's not everybody who is being impressed with what we're saying there are people who are standing from a high altitude in the spirit and watching how we walk like toddlers in this realm you, you see them watch with humility and sometimes they are very humble and they, they appreciate us but if our hearts are open they can show us the way of the kingdom more perfectly i would learn this lesson in a very dramatic way in kano many years ago i went to kano you've heard the story ministering under the power of god and i gave a word of knowledge about this dear woman and she came out very unassuming and i said mama i want to pray for you the lord tells me you are an intercessor she said yes and she said apostle i finish my bible every 15 days that was her covenant with god 15 days she finishes this bible every 15 days and i stood there with the protocol standing by me with the mic and i'm saying okay i have seen jesus oh this man talking to you i've seen the lion of the tribe of judah and i'm standing before this woman who is humble ready to receive prayer from this man of god and the man of god is standing there with the awareness that this one there is a knowing only somewhere here if you read your bible in 15 days let me tell you this it is not that you are a good reader is you have dominion you don't know the kind of spirits that fight your study of the word you will be able to finish a novel four times as big as the bible even in one week but the grace to read the bible and start again you have overcome almost any temptation any man can get it is not about going from genesis to revelation you try it <laughs> You will keep repenting in that journey because of how you will backslide and disappoint yourself. Lord, I'm sorry you will fast again and try it and go back and try it and go back. And you may do well and pass Genesis, get to Leviticus and say, what in the world is going? You will go back, you will backslide. Oh dear. So for a woman to finish in 15 days, I didn't tell you it was a Hausa Bible was not a bible with pictures and images to encourage you while you are going on some intelligent commentary somewhere that just supports your study the house of bible is all that is there is just the scripture 
straight as you are reading you continue moving can I tell you this every time I come for a meeting like this in as much as God is using me to bless his people I am aware that there are, there are also anointings within that meeting and I've programmed my spirit that Lord whilst I am preaching if for any reason my spirit man picks any grace that I need I've programmed my spirit in partnership with the Holy Ghost to draw it to my life quietly while I'm teaching I know what to do with it when I leave that place so a man can finish preaching and know that he did not leave empty it's strange everything he brought left but he still returned full because while he was releasing what God gave him there was discernment you can be here and while you are teaching God is teaching you something while you are preaching concurrently is when you go back you say I hope you learned what I taught you he will act as if you were not preaching I wish I were lying. I would have just apologized and said, let's be serious. But I am very serious about what I am saying. Are we blessed? Knowing only. The moment you know this, the secret is to assume the position of a student forever. And never be ashamed. The moment you confront a dimension that you do not know, do not be ashamed. It is this pride and this arrival mentality especially for some of us that God has helped a bit you know we've seen a few results here and there chances are that you can be so embarrassed when you see an area you know nothing about that's why it's safe to be on your knees permanently so that whatever meets you there you don't have to from that exalted position now embarrassingly kneel down just kneel down by default knowing that something will come that will require me kneeling down to receive law number two we have to hurry up are we blessed do not forget you must pay attention to knowledge look northwards some of you have been looking northwards for 10 years god is saying when will you start looking at other dimensions some of you have been looking southwards this represent different dimensions and god said look northward southward eastward westward capture all of the dimensions of these possibilities so that you can be a maximum blessing as far as dispensing the power of god is concerned Hallelujah. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.